you know, there's a lot of conversation generally about race, but from President Trump himself, he makes the argument that the unemployment rate, the jobless rate for the African American community is at a record low. He, he frequently cites mm -hmm. that st statistic mm -hmm. to make the point that he's improving lives for the African American community and for minorities. Do you think he has created real opportunity? Uh, no, no, I think he's been a failure. I, I, the unemployment rate is low generally, that's good. It was coming down when he took office, that's good. So I give him that. Um, he doesn't get all the credit for it because it was coming down significantly when he took office. But how about, uh, how about gaps in income? They are significant. How about gaps in wealth? They are significant. Um, and what I, I think I'm most concerned about with this president is his penchant to divide us, to attack people because they're immigrants, to attack people because of their religion, to attack minorities, um, to, to, use, to use vulgar language to describe countries where people come who might be Latino or African. Um, there is a concerted effort that he has been engaged in to divide people, including dividing them based on race. And nowhere was that more obvious, nowhere, than in the aftermath of Charlottesville. When somebody drove a car into a crowd in Columbus, Ohio, between his election and when he was inaugurated, and that somebody happened to be somebody from the Middle East, he called it terrorism and went to Columbus to comfort families who had been injured. When somebody of a Middle Eastern background drove a car into a crowd in Barcelona, he called it terrorism. But when this happened in Charlottesville, 90 miles from the White House, in the home of an archetypal American president, suddenly he says, well, you know, there's good people on both sides. He could not distinguish who was on the right side and who was on the wrong side in a white supremacist neo-Nazi rally. And that was infuriating. Virginians really saw that for what it was, because a state that's been scarred like we have, with the divisions of racism and hatred and slavery in the past, when we have a president who can't call it out, it was outrageous. And so, no, I think, I think he has stoked division. I think he has stoked these fears of hatred. He didn't create them. The people who came to Charlottesville to demonstrate their hatred, they, I'm sure, had those emotions before there was a President Trump. But he's stoking it. Um, and I think that's very, very damning that he Why does do that. Why do you think that? Why do you think he's stoking that? Do you think he's racist? I, I don't know him. I do not know him. I have no idea about who he is as a person. So whether it's, it's a sincere feeling or whether he thinks it gets him some political edge or gain, I don't know the answer. But I don't know which of those two is worse. Um, if, if it's not your view, but you do it to try to get a political edge and you try to stoke division, in some ways, that's every bit as morally bad as holding views that are, that are bigoted or racist.